Yo, what is going on guys? It is Huggy Face Gaming here and welcome to another Dragon Ball related video and within this video I'm gonna actually be talking about a lot of things that a lot of people are getting Upset about in terms of the Dragon Ball Super manga So if you guys have not seen what's been happening and whatever I put as a title or thumbnail or whatever It is not complete clickbait because I'm pretty sure a lot of people thought this was clickbait when Geek Dom did this video, but it's actually happening guys so if you guys don't know what's been happening they actually released a new manga chapter for dragon ball super obviously within the dragon ball super manga they are in the tournament of power so and within the manga they're actually going really really fast and that's what a lot of people are kind of upset about is the fact that within the manga they're actually just rushing it at this point they're just literally throwing everything into it to make sure that this manga actually finishes in time and whatnot because it's actually really really behind it was really behind because of the goku black arc they're literally just they're just continuing the Goku Black Art when they should have ended it and whatnot and the Goku Black Art in and of itself within the manga is kind of an issue But the tournament of power is another issue because of the fact of power scaling now For many of you guys who actually watch the anime and you guys watch the anime portion of the tournament of power You guys will know that the power scaling was completely ridiculous within the tournament of power because we had people like Krillin, Android 18, Android 17, Gohan, a lot of those people were keeping up with Super Saiyan Blue Goku and obviously once we entered the Tournament of Power we had characters like Ribrian, Kefla, Kale, uh, Jiren, all of those characters that are just breaking the mold of how strong a character should actually be. Like Kefla for example, when Kefla was first introduced, she was introduced as obviously a Super Saiyan 2 and most likely a Super Saiyan 3 in power level so the character should have been as strong as Vegito within the Dragon Ball Z saga but obviously it took Ultra Instinct Goku to eliminate someone like Kefla so with that a lot of people were disappointed because of the power scaling of how strong that fusion actually was but to actually kick things into the manga within the manga they're actually doing what like the opposite of what the anime was doing which they're making a lot of the people nerfed but they're making other people stronger and by that i mean within this manga chapter and obviously if you don't want to be spoiled from the manga recommend not watching this video because i am going to be talking about the manga and some things that they actually introduced within the manga that has a lot of people mad i'm not really mad at it myself it's just i'm kind of disappointed that they're taking this route Within this uh, manga, we actually get to see Kefla versus Gohan, which is actually really, really cool because Gohan gets his moment to shine within all of this the manga and whatnot that was basically his moment to shine obviously within the tournament of power in the anime he had a lot of time to shine against obviously the universe six Namekians, the universe nine i believe fighters the fight with dispo he had so much within the tournament of power within the anime but within the manga he didn't really get his moment to shine and this fight with kefla was his moment to shine he told goku to keep his eye on jiren while he takes care of kefla and within the manga, it's finally like clear that obviously Kefla shouldn't have been as strong as she was because Gohan manages to eliminate her while obviously they eliminate one another because they both knock each other out, which is really disappointing how Gohan gets knocked out by Kefla. But obviously both of them punch each other in the face and both of them are eliminated, which in my opinion, this should have happened within the anime obviously kefla should not have been as strong as she was within the anime the manga does a really really great job to kind of nerf her power and make her as strong as basically ultimate or mystic a gohan which in other words that's pretty much how the power scaling should have been when kefla was actually introduced within the anime she should not have been as strong as you know ultra instinct goku she should have probably been as strong as mystic gohan which obviously within the manga they do a great job like i'm saying both of them were kind of on par in power they were just battling it out and they just punch each other in the face and they both knock each other out which is really really fascinating but the one thing i do want to talk about that has a lot of people upset is the fact that Muten Roshi, okay, Master Roshi within this manga chapter manages to go toe to toe with Jiren. Now, this, in my opinion, is really, really, uh, it's hype, honestly, seeing someone like Master Roshi actually stand a chance against Jiren, but at the same time, why are they doing this? Like, there should be no reason that someone like Master Roshi should be able to kind of do this against Jiren within this whole fight that they have you know Master Roshi is dodging attacks he's managing to even hit Jiren at some instances like basically the way they actually drew this out it does seem like Master Roshi had ultra instinct like he was literally dodging all of Jiren's techniques he was you know dodging at the right moment attacking when need to be and whatnot and honestly 
with Master Roshi's fight with Jiren, that's how Goku actually manages to get, you know, learn uh, Ultra Instinct himself through this fight. He saw the movements and whatnot. And obviously at the end of this manga chapter, they actually do include the Omen Master Ultra Instinct, which is really weird because like a lot of, you know, anime YouTubers are stating, they thought that they were just gonna go straight into Master Ultra Instinct, but no, they're actually going through the Omen and obviously through the Omen, they're probably gonna go into Master Ultra Instinct sooner or later. But the fact that someone like Master Master Roshi, literally one of the weakest characters within all of the Dragon Ball, well not the weakest, but he's pretty weak down there, like, he's really, really weak in comparison to people like, you know, Krillin, Piccolo, Gohan, especially people like Vegeta and Goku, like, someone like Master Roshi actually was giving Jiren a hard time dodging his attacks, attacking when needs be, and just doing a lot of things like that, like, in my opinion, how are they going to cover this up? Like, Geek Dom was saying within his video, there's going to be, uh, there has to be one of the best explanations to actually understand this, because without a perfect explanation or, you know, a reason why he's this strong, no one's going to really understand why. And because of this, they're basically just shooting Master Roshi through the power scaling. They're just making him go from like a regular Earthling to like a God of Destruction level because obviously Jiren is the mortal that, you know, rivals that of a God of Destruction. So is Master Roshi basically, you know, as strong as a God of Destruction? Honestly, I mean, obviously he's not as strong as a God of Destruction, but he has many, many years of martial arts behind his back. But at the same time, I feel like they should not have made someone like Master Roshi the opponent to rival Jiren within this chapter. Like, they should have just flipped him with Goku, might as well, because, you know, obviously Goku learns the Ultra Instinct Omen by fighting Jiren or, you know, with the spare bomb within the anime. I hate how he actually learned it by watching Jiren and Master Roshi's fight. Like, that in and of itself should not have happened because they're basically stating that he learned it from Roshi rather than, you know, him actually instinctively getting the Omen. So it's kind of weird how they're doing that within the manga. I honestly don't know how to feel about this. Obviously, it's really, really hyped that they are making a character like Master Roshi, someone who a lot of people forgot about, like, this high in power and skill. But at the same time, I don't think people are going to agree with this. People are just going to see this and just hate on it because a lot of people always state that the manga is always better than the anime. But in this instance, I feel like this is just really disappointing. Like, why make Master Roshi? I know... I'm not hating on Master Roshi. I honestly love the character. Obviously, I grew to love him within, you know, the Dragon Ball Super anime when he was actually in the Tournament of Power, when he had his, you know, his little quote to Goku and Go uh, Krillin before he actually did, like, the true Kamehameha and almost died and whatnot. Like, he really, I grew some respect for that man, but seeing what he's doing within the manga, it's just something ridiculous. Like, I honestly love Master Roshi, but I really don't think he should be where he is within the manga. Like, I honestly don't know what explanation they're going to do, you know, to to actually make it seem like you know he's actually stood a chance like i wonder what toyotaro and akira toriyama are actually going to you know use as an explanation as to why master roshi was able to dodge and hit jiren and all of that because honestly there shouldn't be a reason like jiren is one of the strongest within all the universes so why is someone like master roshi considerably one of the weaker characters within you know the dragon ball world able to keep up with someone like jiren but you know, obviously that's my opinion. What do you guys actually have to say about this, all of this Ultra Instinct <laughs> Master Roshi stuff that a lot of people are talking about? Because in my opinion, I'm really, really shocked. Like when I saw Geek Dom do that video, I was shocked myself. I was like, why are they doing this? And honestly, when I read through the, well, I didn't read through the manga chapter because there's still no translations. But when I actually, you know, watched the videos of what Roshi was doing when I saw the scans and all of that, I felt really disappointed. Like, man, I can't believe they actually made Master Roshi that strong to actually keep up with someone like Jiren, you know, considerably one of the strongest uh, opponents, you know, the gang has ever faced within the Dragon Ball world. But, you know, it's, hopefully they have some sort of explanation for this. Hopefully they have some sort of explanation as to Kefla's power within the manga, because obviously, like I'm saying, she, she was basically on par with someone like Gohan, which is something that I'm really, really excited for. I'm really happy that they actually switched the roles here but obviously they shouldn't have put master roshi in the place that he's in but like i'm saying what do you guys have to say about this how do you feel about gohan and kefla's elimination are you guys happy that kefla isn't that strong within the manga like she was in the anime 
but at the same time how do you guys feel about master roshi getting that huge buff in power to actually keep up with someone like jiren dodging his attacks as well as hitting him at some points here and there like honestly this the scans and how it looks it looks really really cool how master roshi is doing this but at the same time like concept wise and all of that it really doesn't make sense as well as how do you guys feel about goku learning ultra instinct through watching master roshi and jiren fight like do you guys like that explanation better that he's watching it or do you like the anime's version where he just gets like sucked into the spirit bomb and he just becomes like one with his true instinct because for me in my opinion that was way cooler than him just watching a fight you know him actually having to experience something to get the omen but like i'm saying that's my opinion what do you guys have to say hopefully you guys enjoyed this video hopefully you guys enjoy this content and as well as thank you guys so much for actually liking the uh, dead by daylight funny moments if you guys have not watched the dead by daylight funny moments i will be linking it at the very end of this video for you guys to watch if you guys you know want to watch it you know you don't I'm not forcing you guys to watch it, but only if you guys, you know, actually want to watch the video, then go for it. And a lot of more funny moments on the way. I have a Black Ops 3 as well as a Fortnite funny moments coming up. I hope I don't fill my channel with too much Fortnite because I really don't want to be like those people who just completely just, uh... <laughs> you know just stop making their original content just for views and stuff like i just want to put fortnite content here and there when i feel like i should but like i'm saying hopefully you guys enjoyed those funny moments hopefully you guys want more funny moments because like i'm saying i do have more funny moments on the way if you guys actually want to see those and like i'm saying with that being said i'll catch you all in the next dragon ball related video peace Super Saiyan changes anything. I'm still the top Saiyan, don't forget that! <laughs>